Okay guys, we're back with the rusty pickle, and as you can see, after the uh, scraping it, it's still got some fresh rust in the holes. So uh, I know this juice is uh, the, the Metal Rescue rust remover bath is getting a little dark, but we're still going to give it a shot. It seems to be doing things to metal still, um, although it does appear to be getting close to the end of its life. It's very, very dark. But um, yeah, just going to leave it assembled, throw it in and uh, pull it out and yeah, probably leave it there for six hours or so, see if it's doing anything. Um, and then we'll be right back. All right. Hey guys, as always, a few hours has turned into a few days and the inky blackness has, uh, you know, gotten a little worse. Um, hard to make out exactly here, but it looks like the rust that was exposed under the black scale has uh, largely been removed. So plan here is going to go wash this in hot water, get rid of the uh, chemical agent, spray it down with a little bit of oil, put it on the towel, and start disassembling it to see if we can get it open a little bit farther and see what everything looks like in detail. Um, back in a flash. Okay guys, uh, pulled her out of the dip, disassembled it, and uh, yeah, so this thing has all manner of interesting things going on inside, um, but not much in the way of pitting or corrosion. It uh, was a little tough to get apart. The pin um, up here, this, this pin goes through the receiver as part of the takedown process. If you have one of these, then you know what I'm talking about, but it was that little dome piece right there and it was frozen in pretty good. Um, actually had to resort to these and uh, this is this is a deliberate taunt of the mad scientist because he absolutely hates vice grips. You won't have them in his shop. So uh, yeah, if he's watching this video right now, that happened. But it worked, um, pulled it apart, um, and as you may be able to tell, it's uh, kind of ugly inside. I mean, it's not pitted ugly, but it is sort of gunky and bluing partially removed. It's, it's interesting the patterning that's occurring inside. You can tell like where the metal surfaces actually were bearing on each other. Let's see if we can get this to focus without looking horrible. There we go. Yeah. Nothing that would impede function or prevent this from being, you know, a, a safe firearm. Um, you know, the pins had a little bit of corrosion on the ends. Some of them were a little stuck, not excessively so. Nothing that required, you know, heavy malleting or anything. But, um, yeah. One thing that I noticed was the pitting, you know, as, as I'm etching away at the black stuff in the holes, it just keeps getting deeper. Um, it's, I don't, I still don't think it's gotten all the way to like good metal. Um, this is that, uh, boiling, nasty, scaly rust that just eats away stuff. It's almost like a marine rust. Um, it's, it's nasty. Um, hopefully I'm going to run this through the tumbler, uh, disassembled and see what, what happens here. But, um, you know, inside looks surprisingly good. You know, there's there's black where the finish was, uh, just from the metal surfaces and the and I think I think there was an oil layer or a grease layer that was inside there that just wasn't washing out with the with anything that was going on. So it uh, yeah it, it you can you can see where it was in contact. It's all the uh, all the finish that's left on this thing. Um, looks pretty decent, all things considered. There was a lot of gunk in between the surfaces that came off. Um, 
you can see some of it. Um, you know, and, and I would attribute this to just the media from the uh, from the Tumblr, but it's it's not. Um, it doesn't feel like Tumblr media at all. It feels more like grit, uh, metallic, rust, corrosion, just nastiness. Um, the bolt is interesting. I don't know how exactly. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it has anything that, that would impede function. Um, I mean, everything looks clean or clear. It's not, it's still got gunk. And it's, it's surprising the consistency. I mean, it feels like grit. It doesn't feel like Tumblr media. But yeah, the, uh, it's quite sharp back here if you grab it. Um, there's still like a couple of the machined in ridges and they, they bite pretty good now. Um, yeah, I don't really see anything that I wouldn't feel comfortable shooting. But I mean, my my comfort level for guns and what is okay to shoot might be skewed a little bit. I'll acknowledge that. Um, but I don't see anything that would be like metallurgically comp compromised. I mean, the rear of the receiver here would be the only thing that I would look at. If that was like at the chamber, on something bigger than a 22, I'd consider potentially reevaluating it. But, uh, you know, on the back end of a receiver, I mean, you could machine most of that away, except for the, the little lip that uh, engages with the, uh, the rear tab back here. And uh, actually, I don't even think you'd need that. I think you just need the hole. Get rid of the whole top of this gun. Oh, I might have to do that one of these days. See how much uh, how much rugering I can remove and still have it function. I shouldn't have these thoughts. Um, Rugers are good guns that are fun to shoot, and I don't think they really need that kind of insanity inflicted upon them. I mean, that said. I do have several, and that would be kind of an interesting thought experiment. Yeah, I bet you could mill it away here, mill it all the way back, and then just leave like a little whoops up there. The bolt would need something on the top to retain the spring, but uh, as long as you had a little loop, I don't see that that would be much of a problem. Maybe two little loops, one up. I wonder how much... Ah, I'll think about it later. Not something worth getting into at the moment. I'm uh, trying to discourage myself from that course of action. Um, yeah, all the internals seem to be salvageable. No, the springs are compromised. It all seems seems like a good gun. Huh. That screw's a little special. Still has a little Loctite on it. I mean there's not much to these guns, honestly. You know, it's it's a Ruger. They're stampings, they're metal injection mold molded uh components. They're not uh they're simple, you know. The tooling for these things was amortized back in the 50s. And, uh, you know, they haven't really, haven't really changed much of it. He says as he drops the pieces everywhere. Um, yeah. So the game plan at this point is I'm going to take this, uh, this gun, or the larger components, I'm going to throw them in the tumbler and see if we can get the black stuff further gone, especially on this piece. This doesn't have much. It's got a little tiny bit more of the black stuff that's been showing up inside some of the dark, the deeper pits. I'm going to go through it with uh, 
I use this. Uh, it's an ice pick, but it's got a 90 degree bend in it. I just heated it up with a, a map gas torch and bend it in a vise so that I have something to pick with that I can get in without, you know, having to stab myself in the hand and just scrape at it. I mean, it, it does scratch things, but nothing that, you know, throwing in the tumbler or hitting with a blaster won't fix. And uh, on this gun, sketches are, or uh, scratches are <laughs> not the biggest concern I, I think I could have. Um, yeah, so got to do something with the rear sight eventually. I've been toying with the idea of doing the little weaver rail that fits in instead of the, into the dovetail. I think that's an 11 meter, do, uh, 11 millimeter dovetail. Uh, double check, but should be pretty straightforward. Put a little red dot on it or something. Um, and go shoot, I guess. It's uh, that or machine it so that it's something radical. But uh, I only just started thinking about that while I was talking now, so I might have to run up some sketches. The only thing is, is I don't want to get rid of any of the the pitting and the nasty, you know? If I'm going to machine anything away, I want it to be part of the gun that's, you know, the pretty part of the gun. I want to leave the, I want to leave the ugly. This has got a very good, you know, <laughs> the Mariner's Ruger from Waterworld thing going on. Um, yeah. So, tumble, tumble next. Uh, big components. I'll do this. I'll do the grip frame. I may do the bolt body. I haven't decided. Uh, I'll probably throw... I'll probably first throw everything back in the dip because it looks... No. Vibratory tumbler, dip, uh, vibratory tumbler, or mechanical removal of some more of the black stuff, dip, um... And then I think I'm going to do a black oxide, uh, park horizon and black oxide on the gun just to keep it from, once it's nice and shiny and pretty, just so that it doesn't get all rusty while, while it's kicking around at the, in the shop or the kitchen table or wherever it winds up being molested. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really kind of impressed on how this has come along. You know, it still has quite a bit of damage, um, cosmetically. You know, this will never be a, uh, <laughs> well, maybe it would be advertised as an NRA 90 percenter. Um, I mean, we've all seen the auctions. But, uh, yeah. I mean, it, this could be restored to being, like, a virginal gun. You know, it's, it wouldn't take much, a little bit of, uh, and we could just turn over the pitting, re-engrave the, the markings. I don't even think you'd have to cut into the markings. I think you just true it a couple, you know, a couple thou off the edge, TIG weld up the holes, uh, or MIG the holes, and then, and then turn it true. <laughs> it might be less work to make a new one, but it could be. I just, I like the, I like the ugly more than I like the pretty. You know, it's easy to find a pretty gun. You got a couple hundred bucks, you walk down to the store, slap it on the counter, they hand you a brand new one. Uh, ugly takes a lot more time and dedication to, to save. And then you got a story. And I guarantee you, you pull this one out of the range bag, uh, sitting next to a brand new one, and, uh, the crowd forms around around this one, which is fun. I mean, you know, part of the part of the range experience that you're going for is, yeah, whipping whipping yours out and having the crowd form. Uh, at least it is for me. I uh, I like the exhibitionist experience of the range. It's fun. Builds character. Yeah, look at that that corrosion. That's just that's just nasty. Ugh. You know, I really should be working with gloves on this just because of the nature of some of this stuff. But, uh, 
yeah, it's keep I keep finding just nasty things inside it that cause me to run and go wash my hands. In fact, I'm I'm fighting the OCD urge to go wash my hands again. Um, just talking about it, but uh, yeah, so gonna get on it and uh, keep keep working the, uh, the the deep pits and getting that out is really the only major thing that I have to do um, before getting to the the black oxide the park and black oxide or maybe just black oxide I don't know I might have to blast it either way the little black pitting can't be can't be there or that'll be a place where rust will continue to eat into the metal it's got to be all bare metal I guess I could, I could if I'm parking it I can blast it in the media blaster um, some of the pitting will disappear I kind of like the idea of tumbling it to a polish and then uh, and then doing it just because this is so unique I mean like there's there is no man-made finish that can look like that you know some things are just I mean you could you could initiate the the process but you'd never duplicate it and I dig that I dig that it's part of the journey of the gun you know the story that it tells okay so I'm gonna get going this has been entirely too long of staring at parts on the screen I'm sure you're getting a little uh, old of it but uh, yeah I wanted to also say thank you for uh, subscribing and uh, you know I hit the uh, 3,000 subscriber mark that I was looking for at uh, at New Year's and also the million views for the channel so thanks appreciate it 